All right, then the word doesn't actually mean anything. Okay, what do you want me to say, Anna? You want me to say wannabe dictator? Uh, sure, you can say like, wannabe dictator, but I don't even think he wants to be a dictator. Of course he does. That's what you do when you lose an election and you go, oh, I. Anna Kasparian and Jink Uger had a heated debate about the idea of whether or not Donald Trump is a fascist. We're going to take a look at clips from the Young Turks with Anna Kasparian and Jink Uger. I will share my thoughts as well. You don't want to miss this one. Let's get into it together. The Arab American community needs to be reminded and cannot forget he wants to ban Muslims, he wants to deport Muslims, and he wants to start internment camps. And that's what we are busy talking to every voter. He's telling you what he's going to do. Believe him. Internment camps? Yes. He has talked in tournament camps. You know what, Jake? You may have to visit me in one. I get worried enough when he talks about what he's going to do to his political enemies. Okay, uh, on yesterday's episode of The Lead, Representative, Democratic Representative, of course, Debbie Dingell, uh, told Jake Tapper that Trump was going to send her to an internment camp. But unfortunately, she's far from the only pundit and uh, lawmaker who's panicked about the possibility of being thrown in prison or an internment camp should Donald Trump get elected for a second term. In fact, let's watch uh, a clip from yesterday's episode of The View in which Mika Brzezinski also broke down on air. Let's watch. Yeah. This is the descent into fascism if we so choose. Normalizing January 6th, it's a day of love. It's a day of love, I'll say it again and again and again. Normalizing enemy from within, I'll say it again and again, I'll say it again and again, until you get tired of it, until it's not so funny anymore, or you think he doesn't mean it until you realize he does mean it and it's too late. Saying these strict abortion bans are a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you kidding me? We got to wake up. And here's the good news, because I come with such dire warnings, and I mean them from the bottom of my heart as a daughter of mm. refugees who came here escaping war, came here for America to be a part of a democracy, to be a part of building something beautiful where they could be free. I'm telling you, the good news is that I believe women will be the beacon in this election. Am I losing my mind in feeling that this hyperbolic rhetoric is not helpful? Yeah, well, 50-50 in my opinion. So when uh, Debbie Dingell says uh, he's gonna start internment camps, he never said that, that is not helpful. On that, you're 100% right. Because once she says something that he didn't say, then not only the right wing, but independents will discount every other thing you've said. Not just every other thing you've said, but every other, every other thing that anyone on the left has said. He never said internment camps, don't say that. Now on the other hand, Republicans, you keep denying something he 100% did say. He said, I want a total and complete shutdown on Muslims entering the country. That was back when he was running in 2016. Everybody keeps, you know why they pretend that he didn't say that? Because that sounds uncomfortable, because it's obviously bigoted. Okay, he did say that. Donald Trump says a lot of dumb crap, okay? A lot of hateful crap, a lot of dumb crap, a lot of undemocratic crap. But like, let's just finish the rest of the story, right? Because he said that about the Muslim ban. He tried to implement the Muslim ban. And then what happened, Jenk? What happened after that? We fought back, right? And uh, uh, people went to the airports. Good Americans. No, no, that didn't matter at all. Okay, Th that action. I know it makes us feel real good about ourselves. I'm not trying to discount it, but we have a system in place. Okay, we have a judicial system. It went through the courts. It was challenged in the courts, and it was struck down. Here's the problem to me with what Anna Kasparian is saying. She is trying to act like these are just words from Donald Trump. If Donald Trump had said he wanted to do a Muslim ban and then took no action on that, then I think I would have some agreement with Anna Kasparian. But he tried to do the Muslim ban and the courts overturned it. Okay, here's the thing. 
What if he says he's going to do something, he then implements it, and the courts back him up? We, we don't know with the Supreme Court what they're going to do. Sometimes they rule the correct way, other times they don't. I mean, look at what happened with Roe v. Wade. So I you can't... I, Anna Kasparian is wrong here, in my opinion, that this is dangerous to just think, oh, these are just words, and, and if Donald Trump does something terrible, the courts will rule the white the right way i mean has she seen these courts and i know she has so this is dangerous here in my opinion and i believe that anna kasparian is way off yeah i got you anna but i'm not going to take a chance on a guy who says i'd like to ban you and your family because you guys are so dirty and inferior to us and i think you're violent savages so i'm going to ban you i'm not going to take a chance on that guy number one number two he actually tried it he had to be stopped before he did his fascist idea Okay, number three, people saw all that and were like, yay, I love Trump, let's ban Muslims, yay. Be honest, be honest, okay? So we want to take another shot. And number th uh, three or four, whatever I'm on, uh, he has his own dumbass judges now littering the country. So one of them threw uh, out a perfectly good criminal case against them. A very, very yeah. important criminal case against them. So maybe we run into a judge who goes, yeah, I think the Muslims are dirty, violent savages. I'm just as bigoted and racist as Donald Trump. I, I do let it stand. I mean, Trump is saying, let's deport anyone who criticizes and protests Israel on a college campus. Not just arrest. He says arrest them and deport them. No, I know he says that. Okay, so, so is he going to try to do that? Of course he's going to try to do that. How would that process work, considering the majority of these individuals are American citizens? So where exactly were he? Okay, so first them? of all, all the non-Americans are screwed. You came here, you paid a lot of money to go to, uh, you know, wh wherever you're going, Syracuse, Penn State, wherever you're going, right? And he's like, ah, oh, yeah, that's it. You're screwed. You criticized Israel, and what? My biggest donor is a giant right-wing Israeli. Okay, so that's it. You're arrested. I rob you of all your money. I rob you of your diploma, and I deport you. I'm not going to elect a monster like that. Yep. I think Anna Kasparian, I mean, this is a dangerous game here to play, to think, oh, well, if, you know, they, how are they going to do these things? Well, you know, if, if Donald Trump and a bunch of far-right MAGA sycophants of his control the government, it's hard to tell what they can do. And in previous fascist regimes, people said the same thing. Ah, oh, they're not going to be able to do that. I mean, that's what people said about Roe v. Wade, and Anna Kasparian hasn't hasn't forgotten this. People said, ah, oh, they'll never, they're just, it's just talk. They'll never overturn Roe v. Wade. That won't happen. And guess what? It did happen. So I think you have to take all of these things very, very seriously because they're going to at least try. And with the system that we have in place, I don't know that you can take anything for granted that the that the court systems are going to protect us. Even with this upcoming election, you know, are, do you feel confident that even if Kamala Harris wins, that we won't see shenanigans from the courts and maybe the Supreme Court to install Donald Trump as president? I'm not convinced that that won't happen. Debbie Dingle, you don't have to go to internment camps. He already said all this crazy stuff. So stop making us lose credibility. On the other hand, right-wingers, if you're making excuses for how anti-Muslim he is, he uses the word Palestinian as an insult. He doesn't care about Muslim lives one bit. Donald Trump is deeply racist, and he says deeply racist things, okay? I want to make a distinction between Donald Trump, the person who says and does racist things, and the notion of a fascist. Because look, if we're just going to use fascist toward anyone we dislike, all right, then the word doesn't actually mean anything. Okay, what do you want me to say, Anna? You want me to say wannabe dictator? Uh, sure, you can say I, wannabe dictator, but I don't even think he wants to be a dictator. Of course he does. That's what you do when you lose an election and you go, oh, I... He said, I want to be a dictator on the first day. He said that he would use the military against people that oppose him, the enemy within, he calls them. So Anna Kasparian... She wants to parse words and say, well, you know, he does all these dictatorial things and he does fascist things. I mean, I'm paraphrasing what she's saying, not using her exact words. But yeah, the guy does fascist things and dictatorial things, but let's not call him a fascist and a dictator. I mean, come on. That is this, as everyone thinks, Anna Kasparian's continual shift to the right? Is she trying to pull a Dave Rubin and become some kind of a right-wing talk host now? I don't know, but I don't understand saying, well, yeah, Donald Trump all does all these. It's not just talk.
with Donald Trump. We know he's tried some of these things in the past, and what are we going to take the risk that he won't try these things in the future? And that maybe if he does, the courts will rule the correct way? I don't, that's not a risk that I'm willing to take, whether Anna Kasparian is or not. I got fake electors, and, I, and I'd like to terminate the Constitution and bring out the tanks and use martial law against American citizens and shoot protesters. I mean, if that's not fascist, then I guess the word just so shouldn't exist. Size. But was he able to do those things? <laughs> First of all, his entire cabinet had to threaten, not, not cabinet, administration, his White and House by the way, team the other had thing to is, say, we're all going to mass resign if you roll out tanks against American citizens. Okay, okay, so if you think he's a fascist, wouldn't that justify taking physical action against him? No, because that doesn't help. That devolves us further into yeah, fascism. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But there's I a just... difference between somebody shooting someone, that's fascism, and saying, I disagree with them. Don't elect a fascist prick who says only white people are awesome and everybody else is garbage and should be banned. No, Look, I'm not gonna take a chance with a monster like that. I know, you're focusing on whether or not you're gonna vote for him. I don't give a damn about that and that's not what I'm asking you about, Jenk. I don't think that this rhetoric, especially from elected members of Congress, is helpful no, at a time. No, I don't agree. Okay, all right. Okay, well, Anna, well, Anna, why do I not agree? Because. So Trump's helpful is rhetoric? Trump's he no, his, his rhetoric is so, awful. Okay, if you don't want to be called fascist, stop saying fascist things. It's not that hard. Okay. Not that hard. Oh, here, let me have dinner with Nick Fuentes, who's a Nazi, Kanye, who's a Nazi. And let me say there's good people on the Nazi side. Oh, it could be pro-Confederate guys. Might be guys who are pro-slavery who are good guys. Let me do all of these things. Let me say that immigrants are poisoning the blood of our nation, a Nazi term that is only used in the past by Nazis, and then say I'm gonna ban Muslims, I'm gonna do this and this and this to all the other ethnic groups and then go, oh, I can't believe you called me a fascist. No, he is a fascist. I'm very happy to call him a fascist. I agree with Cenk Uger. This seems pretty simple. I, I don't really know why Anna Kasparian, you know, it's the old line, if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck. I don't understand why Anna Kasparian wants to say, well, yeah, he does all these, you know, he says all these terrible things, but don't call him a fascist. That's going too far. Cenk Uger's right. He wants to do fascist things. He's tried to do fascist things in the past and dictatorial things, like overturning an election. He's still talking about it. He's never stopped talking about it. He wants to pardon the people that went to prison for trying to overturn an election. He tried to do a Muslim ban. He's talking about all the people that he's going to kick out of the country when he takes over. 25 million people, which there aren't that many illegals in the United States. So who would these remaining people be that they would remove from the country? They would have to be U.S. citizens or people who are here legally. And as Jink Uger is saying, they want to remove protesters from the country. Actual citizens protesting their right to do, you know, they have the right to do that. They want to remove them from the country. I don't know what other, other term you would use than dictator and fascist, but Anna Kasparian feels that that's a bridge too far. I agree with Jink Uger here. I don't know what you think. Do you agree with Anna Kasparian? Do you agree with Jink Uger? And do you think we're going to see a real rift between the two? You know, Anna Kasparian is throwing out these much more right-wing ideas over time, which right-wingers seem to be happy about that, but I don't know about the core audience of... Young Turks viewers, how they feel about this. Let me know in the comments what you think about the the discussion here, heated discussion, I would say, between Jink Uger and Anna Kasparian on the Young Turks. Also, give me a like and subscribe. I'm closing in on 40,000 subscribers. I want to keep growing 50,000, 100,000, and beyond so I can bring out more content like this. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. This is Chris on Culture, and I will see you in the next video.